Church Worship Online. We're glad you're with us. These first couple of weeks in July, Canyon Creek is praying the promises of God. And I hope you enjoyed that video of VBS, which we did virtually this year, to help our kids stand on the promises. I'm Ellen Dittman, Associate Pastor of Care and Connections here at Canyon Creek. And if I haven't met you, I hope too soon. If you're new with us, just scroll down on your phone or go online and click that blue button, Online Worship, and share your information with us if you'd like to begin to get to know one another. Today, we're celebrating the Lord's Supper. I hope that you'll take a moment and prepare a sacred and holy place in your um, wherever you are. And uh, you might get a cloth or a candle, um, but some bread and a cup of juice. Uh, we hope that you'll take a moment and prepare. Just pause your video, and we'll see you in a minute. One of the many promises of God is that he is with us always. Jeremiah 23, 23, God asks, Am I a God at hand? and not a God who is far away? And Psalm 139 reminds us that there is nowhere that we can go where we will be separate from God. In a time where we are encouraged to be physically distant from one another, we are loved by a God who refuses to leave our side. So let us remember whose presence we are in as we come together and worship God now. Even as we enter into God's presence with praise, we fall back, ashamed. We come up short. Our confessions can take on many different forms. Today's prayer of confession is a song written in the 1960s with lyrics written to speak out against hatred, against intolerance, against inhumanity and injustice. Trusting in God's steadfast love let us listen and confess our sins together. Locked down, 
La da 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 Talk about you and me And I guess people pray now Oh, make one love a cry Bare a heart and we'll say goodbye Cross our hearts and we hope to die Like the other was to blame But neither one will ever give in and So I guess at an eight by ten Think about the things I might have been and that's a dirty rotten shame. Da 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 be And talk about you and me And I guess you will play now But look around, tell me what you see What's happening to you and me God bear me the serenity To just remember who I am Cause you give me the sanity For your pride and your vanity Turn your back on humanity and you don't give a da 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 and I guess we will play. Lord God, we don't know why we do the things we do, why we play the games we play. All we know is that we're sorry. We ask for your forgiveness. Help us to be messengers of love, humility, and peace. Bind us together so that when we are weary and burdened, we may follow the one who holds us up and gives us rest. Amen. Friends, we are burdened. We admit there are some things that we want or need to change. Something somehow has made us feel distant from God. But in Jesus Christ, we can be assured. We are not distant. We have been heard. We are loved and we are forgiven. his disciples, peace be with you, he was giving them a blessing. I invite you to share in this same blessing, reminding others of the peace only Christ Jesus can bring. And if you have a phone or a device nearby, I invite you to take a moment to share the peace of Christ with someone you feel could use this blessing today. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Good morning and welcome to online worship with Canyon Creek Presbyterian Church. My name is Megan Flores. I'm the Director of Mission and Outreach at the church, and we're so happy to have you worshiping with us this morning. As Ellen said a few minutes ago, we hope that if you are new to our church family, that you are feeling welcomed among us. We're certainly glad to have you here. You will notice that two very important people are missing this morning. Pastor Chris continues his sabbatical this summer and is enjoying some time with his family. 
And Pastor Andy is also gone this morning. He is enjoying some much needed and well-deserved vacation with his family. So please keep both Chris and Andy in your prayers this week. Well, there is a lot going on in the life of our congregation this summer. And I want to remind you about two things that are beginning. The first is adopt a promise. We are asking for anyone who is interested to choose one of God's many promises and to simply pray through the scripture that corresponds with that promise. We're doing this between now and July 15th. You can find details for this on both the church website and in your Realm app. Search for the post uh, that says Adopt a Promise and you'll find instructions and more details there. This week, we are also beginning some small discussion groups called Safe Conversations, which is a way for us to gather in a uh, virtually via Zoom in groups of 10 or less and work through and talk about some of the things that our country is facing in terms of racism. Everyone is invited, but in order to facilitate meaningful and purposeful and deep discussion, we want to limit the group size to 10 or less. So we do need you to RSVP. To do so, please go to your Realm app, choose the date and time that works best for you, and then RSVP yes for that session. Lastly, this coming Thursday, July the 9th, we will host another food collection for the Network of Community Ministries. This will happen in the CCPC parking lot between 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. this coming Thursday the 9th. Please pick up some extra groceries and then swing by the parking lot for a no contact drop off. As we prepare our hearts to receive the daily offering, I wanna update you on the virtual baby shower that we are throwing for our Gateway of Grace couple, Shazia and Rashid. We as a congregation have flooded them with gifts and they have received almost everything that was on their Amazon baby registry. However, this week they were still missing the pack and play. And as a lot of you know, a pack and play is a big ticket item. It serves as a playpen, a changing table, a bassinet and a crib all in one. And so it's a big deal to have a pack and play, especially for brand new parents. So our sanctuary choir pulled together and decided that they would come up with enough money to purchase the pack and play. Well, they did this, but they collected so much money that they were able to buy both the pack and play and give Shazia and Rashid an additional $150 gift card to Amazon so that they can buy anything else they need or save it for diapers in the future. This kind of generosity doesn't just happen. It doesn't just materialize out of nowhere. Rather, this kind of generosity comes from a people, a group, a congregation of deep faith. It is an expression of our trust and our love and our faith in God that allows us to be generous. May we always be this kind of congregation. So now as we receive the daily offering, let us gather up God's tithes and our gifts and offer them back to God in joy, praise, and thanksgiving.
Scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, beginning with verse 16. And here Jesus is in Jewish territory uh, as opposed to Gentile lands. And so basically he's speaking to the church of the time. Here are what he says. <clears throat> to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. Uh, we wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came both eating and drinking and they say look a glutton and a drunkard. A friend of the tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Then he began to reproach the cities in which most of these deeds of power had been done because they did not repent. And then we move down a few verses to verse 28. And Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble in heart, and your souls will find rest. He says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. These are the words of the Lord. Let us prepare our hearts for the word of God. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. 
Have you ever totally missed where someone's coming from? I mean, it can happen a lot on the phone with, with the lack of visual context clues, but even in person sometimes, a person might be going to like a difficult or painful place and, and even like all of a sudden begin sobbing and, and you think that, I mean, it was kind of a interesting or strange story and you think that they're laughing and you totally miss them. It's really awkward, painful. That is what's happening in our scripture today. Jesus is telling the generation, this generation of Jews, the church of the day, you're totally missing what God is doing. Let's listen again. He says, to what shall I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, I, we played the flute for you and you didn't dance. We wailed and you didn't mourn. Or, in other words, they're playing wedding and funeral, and, and one plays the flute and the other didn't get the cue. They don't know they're supposed to dance. They're totally missing them. We completely miss each other times. Jesus goes on as if God is saying, I sent you John the Baptist who fasted, and you said he was demon-possessed. And then I sent you Jesus who who ate and drank, and you called him a glutton and a drunkard. You're totally missing what I'm doing, he's saying to the people. We play games. We miss what God is doing. As Laura said earlier in the service, the song prayer confession today was a Grammy award-winning song by Joe South, written in 1968, The Games People Play. And it was a painful time in our country, and South spoke out against games that thinly mask, but actually perpetuate hatred and hypocrisy, inhumanity, intolerance, even irresponsibility. South says in his lyrics, we've given up our sanity for pride and vanity, turning our back on humanity and we don't give a flip. That's my paraphrase. South sounds like the prophet Amos or Isaiah or, or John the Baptist or Jesus. We play games and we miss what God is doing. The games go on sometimes for decades, centuries. So what were they missing in Jesus' day by playing these games, like pointing at Jesus' bad habits of eating grain on the Sabbath from the fields that he created, I'd like to say, or how he dined with sinners and tax collectors? They pointed at those, but Jesus says, you miss the powerful work and the reconciliation I'm doing. His, the next verses are really proclaiming woe on these Jewish cities because they didn't give a flip. And they didn't repent. They totally missed what God was doing because they were too busy pointing. What games do you play? Do you miss what God's doing? One of the Jews game that we might recognize is the blame game. This is a game of that time. I'm not trying to harp on Jews. I'm just saying those are the people, um, really Christ's people. It was the church. So one of the, one of the games the church of the day was playing was a blame game. Jesus, love incarnate, was upending the system. He was healing on the Sabbath. He was hobnobbing with the untouchables. He was crossing societal no-no barriers. And rather than seeing that this is what 
God is about, they blame Jesus for upsetting the system. The blame game. There's the, the micromanagement game, otherwise known as the spec game. This game is a double whammy because we not only miss the entire forest because we're focusing on these little minute trees, but we also enjoy noticing the speck in our neighbor's eye. And it's convenient because we don't have to do the hard work of removing the log in our own. The micromanagement game. Then there's the pointing game, which I alluded to earlier. That's a good one. It's, it's always easier to point outward than to work inward where we would meet God already working. What games do you play? And what are you missing? Well, let me tell you about a game that I learned that I was quite astute at playing. I, as I was training to be a chaplain, part of our experience was on the floor visiting patients, but the rest was this inter, interpersonal and internal work. I call it baggage work. <laughs> And you, in that, you notice like what hooks your emotions and, and pulls you into these reactions that way more outbalance uh, what a situation merits. And you work on setting aside your baggage so you can truly listen, maybe even hear. <laughs> you, you work on this internal pain that resonates with another pain which could undermine your care. That's what it's all about, this training. And in this training, you do a lot of work in a peer group. It's, it's called IPR, Interpersonal Relationships. <laughs> and let me tell you, we just loved IPR. Talk about having to be vulnerable. Lots of tears shed and emotions, uh, emotions bared, really, in that room. And our facilitator, of course, was quite skilled at the games people play to avoid doing their own work. Well, one of the games that I painfully found that I would play was to leave the room. I didn't physically leave the room, but I would begin to talk, talk about things that were outside the room. Uh, I'd talk about what happened in a nurse, nurse's station or, or um, maybe with someone else's patient that I saw or, or what, you know, um, somebody over there that was treated unfairly. I could focus on them or that and I didn't have to focus on my stuff. And Leo, our IPR facilitator, would say, Ellen, let's bring it back into the room. What games do you play? What are you missing that God's working on? Our games are quite tiring, aren't they? The dance gets old. We're still unfulfilled because they don't scratch the itch. And rather, our games avoid and distract or 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 deny or even discredit what really is going on inside as if it's somehow invalid. So there's this disconnect in us. Game playing tires us out because it diverts us from what we were made for. Intimate relationships with others, with God. What tiring games are you playing? In these past few weeks, Andy has challenged us to stand in the thorny places of our lives and our world and to let the unbridled spirit do its work. But the spirit needs our cooperation. In these past two weeks, in our online summer Sunday school class, 
we've continued work that was begun in worship. We've gone deeper with ourselves and what, what we might need to consider in our own understanding or um, acknowledgement of ourselves around racism. If you miss these classes, I really hope that you'll view them online. Let me just take a minute and show you how, in case you don't know. You just go to the website, you click the green button, online opportunities, then you go to the adult summer Sunday school class and watch June 21st and 28th. You can skip through the boring parts. I hope you'll take some time to watch these because this is where the church is right now. It's, it's setting the stage also for where we're going. These next few weeks at Canyon Creek, we have safe conversations. Safe conversations, little meetings with a group that stays constant, that group uh, on Zoom, around issues of racism. And there to be, there's three, three of the sessions, maximum of 10 people, facilitated by uh, staff or lay leaders of the church. And there to be a safe place to process where we are, where we are, where each of us is. To share our stories and our concerns and our experiences and to listen to what we might not have been able to hear previously in others and even in ourselves. I hope that you'll take advantage of these, and of these opportunities to go deeper. Just go to your Realm events and you'll see really 13 different time slots. Daytime, evening, every day of the week. Take advantage. I think it's what the Spirit is calling Canyon Creek to do. And as an aside, I just love that at the same time, totally independently, we are praying the promises of God. Both are steps that lean us in toward what God is doing as we let go of the games that we play. What is Jesus' answer to the games that people were playing, even to our games? <laughs> it was being yoked with him. Yes, yoked. Yoked with Jesus. Amazingly, this accusation of game playing, of completely missing God, even to the point of woe being proclaimed on the, the Jewish cities because they just didn't get what God was doing, and they didn't repent. All of this leads in the scripture in Matthew right into the invitation to be yoked with Jesus. Jesus invites us to be yoked with him. Wow. I mean, what, what God does that? What God cares that much? What God is so much about work? I mean, you know, those, the yoke is, is for work. It's like oxen yoked together, pulling a cart or a plow. It's, it's like the yoke of marriage, like the yoke of being a pastor or a deacon or elder, any ordination. I like the yoke of a covenant relationship. It's work. To a generation lost in game playing, completely missing God and one another, Jesus said, walk with me. Work alongside me. Be so connected that you'll be joining in whatever I'm doing, whether it's in you or whether it's in our world. Friends, it's time to let go of the tiring games. They cause us to miss the mark anyway. 
Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me, because I'm gentle and humble of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Treasure these words. Amen. When Jesus invites us to the table, he asks us to come as we are, to set aside games that we're playing, to let go of things that we are grasping onto, holding onto tightly, to let go of attachments and diversions. He asks us to come empty-handed. What do you need to let go of? Jesus invites you to the table. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we praise you for your creating power and your providential care. We stand in awe of the world you have made, the covenant you have established, and that we get to be a part of it. And above all else, the gift of your precious son, Jesus Christ. Our response is gratitude. And so with thanksgiving, we remember the gift of this sacrament. We claim joy in that you meant this meal to be a celebratory feast. We claim relationship with you as your Holy Spirit draws us into deeper communion and fellowship with you. We claim victory over sin and death in the eternal life we have in you. Gather us as a family across the distance right now. Lord, rescue us from the things that threaten us. Touch us with rest and peace. Bind up the wounds of those who are hurting. Give love to those who feel estranged or bitter. Reorder our lives until we learn to pray without ceasing and to glorify you in all things through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his disciples and took the bread. And having blessed it, he broke it, saying, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For as often as you take this bread and drink this cup, you remember me, my victory over sin and death until I come again. Friends, Jesus' body and blood for you.
grateful for the gift of Jesus Christ who poured out his blood and gave his body for us. Love incarnate. God, we leave this table renewed in your spirit, transformed in small ways, ways where we've given up what we've held on to and we've come to you empty-handed. Take us with those empty hands into the world that we can receive and share in your love freely. Amen. Okay, let's go. Walk with me as we head outside. That's where God sends us, right? Into the world. Friends, we're playing games and we're missing God. We need to let him go. Be about what God is about. And don't be afraid to join him. The yoke is easy. The burden light. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>